So welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about arc faults, AFDDs, how they work, and what the pros and cons are of this technology. We've also built in a competition into this video that gives you an opportunity to win a fully populated Verso RCBO board with surge protection. So watch the whole video for a chance to win. With all that said, let's get going. hottest topic in the UK domestic circuit protection market at the moment, and that's arc faults. So why are arc faults becoming such a hot topic, no pun intended, and you'll see why in a minute, um, for the electrical world? Well, obviously with Amendment 2 around the corner and AFDDs being talked about for a while now, people are asking more and more questions about arc faults. How much of a risk are they? Should have we known about it before? Is it, you know, is it really causing that much of an issue? So what is an arc fault? Well, an arc fault is a visible plasma discharge that's created through a current transferring through a non-conductive medium, like air. So what happens is when it does that, it creates what looks like a spark. So it's effectively when the electrical current jumps a gap to create a spark. Now that's an arc fault. Now the problem, the main problem with an arc fault is the fact that each arc fault can generate up to an excess of 6,000 centigrades worth of heat. So obviously without without being too much of a scientist, 6,000 plus centigrade worth of heat could easily create a risk of a fire in a domestic property. Now, uh, to, to take a further look at that, we also need to understand what causes an arc fault, which we'll go into now. So, what causes our beloved electrical current to start jumping gaps like Evil Can Evil? Well, in domestic settings, there aren't a huge amount of, of reasons an arc fault occurs. It, it, they are very simply explained. A really common one in older properties are where contact points on something like a switch have been worn to a point that creates a gap between the contacts. So there again, creating a gap of which the electrical current needs to jump. Sometimes you can actually see this in switches when you click the rocker and it looks like there's a little spark in behind it. That is a very, very small arc, just for an example. One of the most common forms of arc faults is uh, due to damage cable or insulation on the cable. Now, this can be created by something as simple as a nail going through a wall and, and snagging a bit of cable. Really common, actually, in newer build houses where plasterboard walls are really common. Now, if you're hanging a painting, a television, or whatever on your wall in an, on a plasterboard wall, everyone aims for the stud. Because if you live in a new build house, for example, you'll know you put something through a plasterboard wall and if any kind of weight is coming straight out. So people are aiming for the stud, which is also where most electricians will run their flex. So as the cable's coming down the stud, a nail could, or a screw could quite simply scrape the insulation of the cable or even damage the cable itself. And that in itself will create an arc fault. Now, not enough, it doesn't have to be enough to actually go through the cable. Just a small snag can create a heat rise or a gap for that electricity to jump, therefore creating an arc fault and that heat that could potentially cause a fire. Now, loose connections are also a, a potential risk of an arc fault. Again, a loose connection will create a gap, that bit of air between the two connections, even though it might not be that big, it could be a fraction, still does create a non-conductive medium of that electricity to jump, and therefore creating that spark, and again, that 6,000 plus centigrade worth of heat. So again, another fire risk for something as small as a loose connection. So, that is, by definition, what an arc fault is. And as you can see, just by what creates an arc fault, it's a probable common fault within a domestic dwelling. So the question is, how do we protect homes against this probable fault? Enter the AFDD. So in 2018, there was a staggering statistic released that over 13,000 domestic fires in the UK were as a result of an electrical fault. So you can understand why AFDDs have been gaining an awful lot of momentum in the past few years as a potential solution to reduce that risk of electrical fires in the home. So, what is an AFDD? Well, AFDD stands for, wait for it, Arc Fault Detection Device. Bet none of you guessed that one. 
So these arc fault detection devices are really clever bits of kit that are designed to go within your consumer unit and can protect and detect these small arc fault detections on your circuit. Now, these AFDDs are designed using microprocessor technology. That's right, a microprocessor. You know the things that no one's been able to get hold of for two years? That's what's in these AFDDs. So, this microprocessor technology is really clever and really sensitive. And what it does is it monitors each of those circuits that are protected by an AFDD and regulates its waveform. Now, should it detect um, any form of signal that shows that it could potentially, or any disruption to that waveform that could potentially be an arc fault, it will trip like a standard MCB or RCBO to protect that circuit. <laughs> Bomb cuts it off therefore eliminating the risk of any heat rise created by an arc fault and then obviously reduce the risk of fire on that installation. With most AFDDs, you'll find a test button on the front, exactly the same as you would do on a standard RCD or an RCBO. This so the end client and the homeowner can actually test the AFDD regularly just to make sure it's continually working. So AFDDs do actually vary in size, shape, color and everything else. A lot of AFDDs currently on the market uh, are two, uh, like a double pole size, same as two MCBs next to each other. A lot now are migrating over to a, an RCBO type format, so they're the same size as a tall RCBO, as you'll see with our uh, Versal AFTD. It's exactly the same size as our standard tall RCBO. Now this does make it easier to integrate it into uh, an installation. However, if you're already working on a pre-existing split load board, that can be quite challenging. Not only because of the space that you might have or might not have, but also because of the buzz bar arrangement as well. So it's all going to be an awful lot easier, more common, I believe, to find um, AFDDs being used on new installations or rewires and board changes. Then you'll see people going back to an existing split load uh, installation and then installing them. Now, not all AFDDs have an integrated RCBO into it, which again creates a larger problem with space although most now are migrating to that design, again, similar to ours. There are a lot on the market, so you'll have to just double check on which one you're using and its protective capabilities. For example, our Verso AFDD here, which is designed in the same space and shape as a tall RCBO, has the AFDD microprocessor technology combined with the protection of a Type A RCBO. Now, you'll actually see a great installation from Cablesmith on his YouTube channel where he fitted our first ever 32 amp Type A AFDD into a kitchen final circuit. Now, what's key to note here is this little indicator. Most AFDDs will have something similar. They may vary in size and color, so you'll have to check with that manufacturer as to what it's actually meaning when it's indicating and flashing at you. But for those of you with a photographic memory, here's the key for all of ours. Are you ready? Good, I hope you remembered all of those. So, what are the pros and cons of AFDDs? Well, let's start with the positives of these little microcomputers. Now, I think we can all agree that anything that can help reduce the risk of fire, uh, especially when we consider that 13,000 domestic homes figure that are related to either electrical appliances or electrical faults in the home, anything that can reduce that has to be seen as a positive. And I think we can all agree that AFDDs will reduce the risk of art faults creating uh, domestic fires. So in my opinion, anything that can reduce that risk of a domestic fire has to be seen as an advancement for our industry, especially when you think it's such a critical piece of technology like a consumer unit. So I think it has to be put into consideration. But we also need to remember nothing is perfect and it is a constant journey to improve that electrical safety journey. And we've all got to play our part in that. Nothing's perfect, and it's really hard to please everyone. But the two biggest objections we're hearing about the use and, and the integration of AFDDs, both into installations and into the Amendment 2 of the 18th edition, focus around two key factors. Now, the first is actually nuisance tripping, and the second is price. So let's delve into those cons to see if we can kind of work through if they're actual obstacles or if it's just a mindset situation. So nuisance tripping can be explained in, in a quite simple manner. So as we've talked about, these are our highly sensitive little microcomputers within an RCBO format. Now, these are susceptible to tripping based on two main factors, really. The one would be like an old or slightly faulty device that may be creating some dysfunction 
on the circuit and altering that wave line slightly. So the AFDD will pick that up and act in accordance. So if it thinks it's an arc fault, it's going to trip. So any anomaly on that wave line can obviously create a trip. Now, some people might perceive that to be a nuisance trip. However, the easiest thing to do would be check those appliances to make sure that that's not what's causing the issue. The second is actually the type of AFDD you're using. So obviously, as with anything, there are different qualities of anything in the market, okay? So there are gonna be certain qualities of AFDD that are gonna be struggling potentially with continuity, which brings us on really neatly to the question of price. Look guys, it's no secret that AFDDs are gonna be vastly more expensive than we've become accustomed to paying for an RCB over the past few years. We have already seen some prices of certain manufacturers out there at 100 pound plus. Remember, there will be a complete variant in price on the market. Inevitably, there'll be some up there that'll be sort of ridiculously high prices, and there'll be some that'll be ridiculously low. You know, as with anything, you know, you, you, you've, you've got to weigh up the pros and the cons, and there will be AFDDs out there of different qualities of one another. However, that's not really the question. The question is, when people spend more money on a branded coffee than they do an RCBO lately, can you really justify not spending the extra money on a couple of circuits per board, for example, the higher loaded circuits like your 32 amp final rings on a kitchen that have a consistent load going through for fridge freezers, etc., that could potentially save someone's life. Now that's a conversation that you'll have to take into the installation and potentially it'll be taken away from us with Amendment 2 anyway, but I think that if you explain this with the risks of a potential arc fault fire to the end client, most people will opt for the extra 100 quid to go in on, a, on, a, on, a, on one or two circuits to eliminate the risk of you know, their house and everything they know and love and potentially someone they care for you know, being at risk of a fire. So why are AFDDs so expensive at the minute? Well, there, there's a lot that goes into that and I guarantee you price of AFDDs will drop over a period of time, just like RCBOs did. You know, there's, as, as soon as they become more common practice, the economies of scale just from the manufacturing processes will increase with microprocessors, but hopefully going back to a normal supply level, that will also decrease the price because their accessibility will become easier. But there's also a lot of investment uh, of engineering, of technologies, of testing that goes into certain brands in the UK, ours included. So there's an awful lot of cost, investment cost that goes into these devices just to bring them to market. So unfortunately, inevitably, these costs are passed on in those initial years to those people looking to install these new technologies. And that's just unfortunately the way the world works, especially when you're dealing with such a high technology product such as an AFDD. So by now, I'm sure you're gasping at a bit to find out more about our Verso AFDD. So I will not disappoint. Our Verso AFDD, as you've seen already, is the same design as a tall RCBO. Ours is actually two millimeters deeper than a standard RCBO, just to accommodate the microprocessor and all the other technology within it. So this is our Verso AFDD. Now, it, uh, we've made sure and we've worked really, really closely with all our testing houses and our supply partners to make sure that we'll have accessible product come the beginning of April, no matter what the regs say, we will have that product available for you in case you do need it or want to use it. So we've also worked really, really hard with all of our raw material suppliers, component suppliers, and our distribution partners to make sure that we can bring the best quality product to market we physically can, but make it as affordable as we can. Now, of course, there's gonna be uh, brands out there that are more expensive, and then, like I said earlier, there will be brands out there undoubtedly that will be cheaper. But what I can promise you is our Versal AFDD will be adequately priced, it will be affordable, and it'll be tested to the highest standards we could physically put it through. So look, the great news is most of our distribution partners have already placed large pre-orders on these AFDDs, which means you'll be able to access them as soon as they're available. Now, just as an added bit of confidence in the Verso AFDD, just like with our RCBOs and RCDs, they're all individually tested. We don't batch test our product just to ensure the quality even further. Now, another little thing, if you guys have got any questions about our AFDDs, AFDDs in general, or just the amendment too as it comes out, please just get in touch. Call us, visit the website, or, or get in touch with us on the social media. I mean, most of you guys touch base with us on Instagram all the time. Or just leave a comment below and we'll get back to you, no trouble at all. So, 
At the beginning of the video, I did promise you guys a competition. And for those of you who have watched the entire video, uh, thank you very much. And here's your opportunity to win a fully populated RCBO board with surge protection. All you've got to do is like this video, subscribe, and then send us a direct message on Instagram to tell us that you've done it. And that's it. You'll be entered into the competition and we'll announce the winner on our next video. Good luck, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you very much. Thank you.